good afternoon students welcome you all uh, to the next session regarding discussion on uh, interaction part of turbo machines in the previous session we have discussed regarding uh, the significance of pi terms problems related to the pi terms that is significance of different pi terms apart from that we have solved some problems on specific quantities unit quantities in today's session we will be discussing on some the hydraulic model analysis regarding uh, geometric similarity kinematic similarity dynamic similarity and some of the problems related to the mo model to prototype analysis so on the screen already you can see the subject name its subject code as per the video syllabus these are my email ids and if you have any doubts you can send me an email to this email id or even send me message to this whatsapp number also so with this all we shall begin today's session such that we can go through the slides one by one so as i was telling you in today's session we will be discussing first thing regarding hydraulic model analysis so why is this model analysis required so many times when we are building any buildings or even a component before we go for the real production of that particular component we try to build a particular prototype where you can uh, give the shape of a prototype then you study the different parameters of the prototype and whatever the things or problems you have been encoded in that prototype you try to rectify it and the same you can do even for the models so therefore in our hydraulic model analysis here the investigations we are establishing to see that we can get a real depth visual presentation of the particular problem of the various flow phenomena so for a new flow phenomena we can study regarding the visual depth of demonstration as well as the problems encountered so therefore <clears throat> when we do the hydraulic model analysis what you order the benefits we may have is one important thing is uh, if you want to build a model every time it is uh, we need more amount of time and apart from that if you observe the theoretical or analytical treatment of that problem is almost an impossible task so some of the works such as the river training works or some marine design or you can say some analysis of three dimensional boundary layers if you have to do the theoretical or analytical treatment it's almost an impossible process and it takes a lot amount of time another important thing is when we go for the analysis if you start with the mathematical analysis it can, it can be done but you need to put a lot of boundary conditions with respect to that particular model which means it is a tedious process it takes more amount of time but if you have the model observations with you then you can carry out the calculations with a less amount of time which means you will be having good swift and economic solutions for that particular case and apart from that if you mainly think from the safety point of view and economic point of view that is a less cost then the structure is so important that we can directly verify some physically well such theoretical solutions and get the required results that is the reason that before we go for the development of any model we make it analysis by using a node known as hydraulic model analysis in this we need to study regarding the three types of similarities and those three types of similarities they are in this particular thing that is let us see them one by one so the model to prototype similarity conditions we need to study totally we have three types of similarities one is the geometric similarity second one is the kinematic similarity and the third one is the dynamic similarity so whatever the principle of all model designs is there we are preparing a model wherein we can study regarding its behavior and can produce a were the consistent accurate production of a prototype performance therefore in the first similarity geometric similarity geometry means what it defines the shape and size of the product so for defining defining a shape and size of the product we need to know very 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 three dimensions that is uh, the length we need to know the length we need to know the breadth <coughs> and the last one is depth 
So in the geometry is a thing, but to decide the shape and size of a particular thing, you need to know these three. So if 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 you compare the geometric similarity of a model to a prototype, then you can say that the length the length of the model m means suffix here is model, p suffix means prototype. Then the length of a model should be similar to the length of a prototype, which is should be equal to or you can say that breadth of a model must be equal to a breadth of a prototype. Similarly, depth of a model must be equal to the depth of a prototype, which means will be satisfying the first condition of geometric similarity. Similarly, if you go for kinematic similarity, here kinematics means with respect to the motion, or you can say with respect to the velocity of a flowing fluid. So, in the model and prototype in a fluid is been flowing, along with the conditions of geometrically similar, you need to compare the ratios of the velocity of the fluids, which are at all the points, they are homologous, that is they are same in nature, at all points they are homologous in equally. So if you write for the kinematic similarity, you can say that velocity at point one for the module, to the ratio to velocity of point one to the prototype. Similarly, velocity at point two of a model to the ratio of velocity at point to the prototype. And this goes on to the other points also. This is regarding kinematic similarity. Similarly, the last type of similarity is the dynamic similarity where we'll be considering all types of forces acting on that particular fluid element. So the dynamic similarity you can say that it can exist for a model and a prototype only when they have geometrically and kinematically similar only when the models and the model prototypes are geometrically and kinematically similar and the ratios of the corresponding forces especially at the points where you are going to measure they should be equal that is they said that the corresponding forces acting at the corresponding points they should be equal so generally if i say that f1 is a gravity gravity force for model for a model then the ratio of the gravity force for prototype that has to be measured at the same point one similarly if f2 that is 2 representing the viscous force for a model so the ratio of the viscous force for a prototype similarly for third it may be a body force so what we say that which kind of force you are measuring for a point model the same type of force has to be measured by prototype so the ratio of the forces for a dynamic similarity they are represented in this fashion that is f1 for a model to the f1 to the prototype which is also equal to the f2 to the model to f2 to the prototype and this goes on until all the forces acting on a particular model and prototype they are taken into consideration these are the things you need to know when you need to solve the problems on the hydraulic model analysis now let us begin with the problems step by step so the first question number six he says that there is an output of a 10 kilowatt which was being recorded on a turbine an output of 10 kilowatt was recorded on a turbine having 0 0.5 diameter revolving at a speed of 800 rpm under a head of 20 meters what is the diameter and output of another turbine which works under a head of 180 meter at a speed of 200 rpm when their efficiencies are same find the specific speed so here in the question he has said that there are two turbines so let us first try to extract the given for a given problem he says an output of 10 kilowatt output in the sense it is power p1 he has given it is 10 kilowatt power output for a first turbine it is p1 then he says having a diameter of 0.5 meter which means d1 is equal to 0.5 meter then revolving at a speed of n1 is equal to 800 rpm under a head of h1 is equal to 20 meters 
what is the diameter and output of another turbine so diameter and output of another turbine is diameter in the sense for another turbine it is d2 output of another turbine is k2 which works under a head of, for a second turbine has given the head h2 is equal to 180 meters and he has given a speed for second turbine n2 which is equal to 200 rpm and their efficiencies are same efficiencies are same means eta 1 for the first turbine should be equal to the efficiency for second turbine eta 2 they asked to find us the specific speed these are the things they have asked us to find out so these are the given things which you have seen here now let us see how the solution can be obtained for this particular problem so we have noted on the things as already just now you have seen for the solution part we need to calculate the specific speed of a turbine which is uh, for a power equation we are written we are writing it as ns is equal to n root n1 root of p1 divided by h1 to the power of 5 by 4 or you can start with even the head coefficient also so if you use the head coefficient so the head coefficient already you have learnt in the significance of pi terms for the head coefficient you are writing the equation as g h by n square d square this is the head coefficient now with respect to the first turbine g h1 n1 square d1 square which is equal to this with respect to the Second turbine, so with respect to second turbine, how we can write now? G H2 divided by N2 square into D2 square. So on both sides, the G gets cancelled. H1, we know, we know H2, we know N1, we know D1 we know n2 we don't know d2 so using this equation you can find the value of d2 so let us see what we have got the answer so using this equation as i told regarding for head coefficient we get the answer of d2 as 6 meter so once we have the value of d2 as 6 meter then we go for the equation of specific speed and s is equal to n1 root of p1 h1 to the power of 5 by 4 through which you can get the value of specific speed as ns is equal to 59.81 in terms of si units if it is in terms of metric units to the given answer which we obtained that is 59.81 we multiply by the constant factor of a 0.857 when it is given in emks now directly it is in size no need for conversion then another term left is output power of a second turbine so use the same specific speed equation with respect to second turbine conditions that is ns is equal to n2 root of p2 by h2 to the power of 5 by 4 the same equation with respect to second turbine so the value of p2 what do you get now it is 38874.86 kilo watt now the next problem so if you observe in the next problem, he says that there is a model for a turbine which is built with a scale of how much 1 is to 4 and this it is tested for a head of 10 meters. The prototype has to work under a head of 50 meters at 450 rpm. Bit number 1, he says what speed should be the, mo the model run if it develops a 60 kilowatt using 0 0.9 cubic meters per second at this speed. And second bit is what power will be obtained from the prototype assuming that its efficiency is 3% better than that of model. So if you make the analysis of this particular problem for a step wise, you can start in this fashion. Initially he says, there is a scale of one is to four. You always remember if there is a scale or if it has a size, which means with respect to the diameter ratios of a model and prototype. You need to analyze whether it is given with respect to model or to prototype. So initially in this problem, if you read a sentence, he has said a model, which means diameter of the model 
So the diameter of a prototype it is given by one particular ratio that is one by four. It is tested under a head of ten meters. What does it mean? HM is equal to ten meters. This prototype now here from here the product conditions change. The prototype has to work under a head of fifty meters. So for the prototype, its head is how much? Fifty meters, running at a speed of fifty RPM. That is NP. 450 rpm it is then he says bit number one what should be the model run if it develops if the model is running so model is running means with respect to the model pm it is 60 kilowatt and this one is discharge that is qm it is equal to 0.9 cubic meter second or you can write directly as meter cube per second and the last condition which he has given to us is regarding the efficiency efficiency of a prototype as 3% better than that of a model suppose if i say my efficiency of a prototype is 1 then the more efficiency of a model it has to be still 3% better than this one so that is 1 plus of 0.03 of a model which means how much we get 1.03% which means efficiency of a prototype is equal to 1.03 times the efficiency of a model these are the things you need to know now let us begin with the solution part of this particular problem so as i told he has given the scale means with respect to the diameter ratio or with respect to the we can also call it as the size also so he has given with respect to the model of prototype that is 1 by 4 or i can write it in this format also that is uh, dp by dm is equal to 4 next if you observe here we have taken down the not conditions and the discharge point and cubic meters per second can be written as meter cube per second also then i have told you the converse that is the relation between the efficiency of a prototype to the efficiency of a model it is in this particular fashion now we need to find out the things regarding What speed should the model run? That is Nm. We need to find out Nm as well as what power that is Pp of a prototype. We need to estimate. So once we start with the calculation, you can say that you can take the head coefficient equation as your basis. That is G1 G H1 H1 divided by N1 square D1 square is equal to G H2 divided by N2 square D2 square. So if you use this particular relation, then we can find out the value. of the things that is uh, the value of uh, the speed of a model nm so after substitution and simplification we get the answer of nm speed of a model as 804.98 rpm similarly if i make use of a power equation so before i start the make use of a power equation you know that always how do we calculate the power power p is equal to rho g q h considering the efficiency term now he has given the efficiency of model as well as the product with some ratio he has given the ratio as model is equal to 1.03 times the production value this equation has been given to us so let us take this considerations and get the particular values so how we can find out the power as i told you we make use of this equation power p is equal to rho g q h into efficiency the same we write with respect to the model m and this prototype p now if i take the ratio of a power output of a prototype to the power output of a model then what is the resulting equation we get it is in this particular fashion so if you observe right now here the constant terms rho g on both numerator and denominator they get cancelled then we have uh, the qp by qm into hp by hm into efficiency of the prototype to the efficiency of a model here we don't know the discharge value of both we have only of one term we don't know other but this also we can convert this in the form of the diameter ratio itself that is using our uh, another coefficient we call it as the flow coefficient so already you know the flow coefficient how we can write the flow coefficient 
we can write the flow coefficient as that is this particular equation we simplify and the flow coefficient as qp of divided by np into dp cube is equal to qm by nm dm cube the higher return because we want the value of qp by qm so you can get simplified by rearranging terms if i take qm to the lhs and np dp cube to rhs we get the resulting equation as in this pattern now substitute the value of qp by qm in equation number 1 So once you substitute here, what do we get? The new simplified equation that is dP by pm is equal to np into dP cube by nm dm cube into hP by hm into eta p by eta m. Already we have a relation for eta p and eta m. That is eta p is equal to one point zero three times of eta m. So how I can write now? Just simply substitute the values, get the resulting answer. so therefore power of a prototype what do we get we get it as this particular that is 11055.18 kilowatt so this ratio this value of uh, eta p by eta m i am substituting here directly so that is we get this particular value of power of a prototype similarly another one problem which is asked in the year december 2018 and jan 2019 it has been said that uh, test on a turbo machine runner of 1.25 meter in diameter at 30 meter 30 meter you had it gave the following results power developed 736 kilowatt speed is 180 rpm discharge is 2.7 meter cube per second find the diameter speed and discharge of a runner to operate at 45 meter head and give 1472 kilowatt at the same efficiency what is the specific speed of both the turbines so if you observe carefully here in this particular problem here he has said that when you conduct a test on a turbo machine runner so he has conducted a test on a turbo machine runner its diameter is how much 1.25 meter so you can say this runner as d1 itself then this one is head as h1 then the power developed from the following result as p1 speed this is n1 discharge this is q1 find the diameter speed and discharge of a runner again he has said now the diameter and speed and discharge of a runner so of a runner how do we get so to operate it at 45 meters so this one when you operate at 45 meters what do we get so this is to operate 45 meter head is this is h2 then the power developed is p2 with the same efficiency says efficiency means eta1 is equal to eta2 what is the specific speed of both turbines you need to find the specific speed so these are things which are given in this particular question so just note on the things i have told it's a fix 1 and 2 so now once you write the equation just go and find the first you can start with finding the specific speed itself directly or even go and go for the head coefficient also but if you go for the head coefficient you don't know the values of both n2 and d2 so let us start with this particular fashion that is using the specific speed equation itself <clears throat> ns is equal to n1 root of p1 by h1 to the power of pi by 4 So in this particular equation, you will get the value of a specific speed as sixty-nine point five five. Now, using this specific speed, you can find the power of p two. Let us write is n s is equal to n two root of p two by h two to the power of five by four. So substitute the values. You will get the value of n two. Once you get the value of n two, use your head coefficient equation. Get the value of diameter d two. Yes, the same head coefficient I have used here. So, if you substitute the values in this particular equation, the value of Q2 you are going to get it as 1.304 meter. This is so. Yeah, what are the value of Q2 as 1.304 meters? Next, use the flow coefficient equation. That is Q1 n1 d1 cube is equal to Q2 n2 d2 cube. Then substitute the values. You will get the value of discharge. That is 3. This is six meter cube per second. 
so these are some of the problems which we can <clears throat> these are some of the problems which you can solve using uh, the model and prototype studies so if you have any doubts you can send me an email as there is in the first slide and uh, apart from this i'll be sending you the new things so please subscribe to the youtube channel so you'll get the recent notifications thank you students